In this presentation, you will learn about conflict schools of the modern era. Ralph Darendorf, a German who was also the director of the London School of Economics for many years and from where he built up a recognized school of conflict sociology, is credited with coining the term conflict perspective in sociology. Darendorf believed that neither Marxism nor structural functionalism were enough to explain modern industrial capitalist societies based on current sociological theories at the time. Marxism's failure was due to its inability to comprehend the importance of consensus and integration in modern democracies. Furthermore, Parsons' structural functionalism acknowledges change, whereas Marxism's theory of contradiction cannot be described without assuming an existing structure. As a result, no society, least of all modern democracies, is without both integrative and conflictual elements. What stands out the most is how much more complicated social structures are than the dialectical paradigm used by Marxism. There are many more types of class in modern society than the bourgeois and proletariat, which Marx depicted as society's basic contradictions. It's no longer a question of one layer wielding power while another being exploited. Workers are backed by trade unions, collective bargaining and legislative initiatives in modern industrial society. Other organizations such as international labor unions and human rights commissions intervene in a variety of situations. Individual ownership of private property has been greatly tempered by the emergence of joint stock companies in which, in addition to the capitalist owners, managers and shareholders, play an important role. By social class shall be understood such organized or unorganized collectivities of individuals who share manifest or latent interests arising from and related to the authority structure of imperatively coordinated associations, writes Darendorf in his classic work, Class and Class Conflict in Industrial Society. Social classes are always conflict groupings according to the categories of latent and visible interests. Darendorf posits a broad distinction between the command class and the obey class at a more generalized level to account for differences in interest holding groups and the complicated nature of property and authority and class conflict would therefore refer to the struggle between those with authority and those without. However, the disadvantage of this proposal is that social classes would only exist under specific conditions just as some people may be in charge in one region but not in another. Furthermore, social classes will exist across society and will lose their structural significance. Darendorf preferred the term stratum for the structural and static notion of hierarchy and regarded class as a dynamic phenomena of real society. Gerard Lenski is another influential conflict theorist. By the 20th century, sociologists were more interested in the distribution of power in society and how it was deployed than in the concept of class as an economic category or static stratification. Lenski described class as an aggregation of individuals in society who share a comparable position in terms of power, privilege and status. More contemporary sociologists had to comprehend the dynamics of power in a society that was more dynamic and diverse with many more roles to fill and various sources of power to draw from. The major issue was to explain the foundations on which power was dispersed as well as who received what and why. As a result, the idea of class has been superseded by that of power classes. There are layers of authority and control in modern society and just like in a corporate organization, a big number of people may be involved at different levels. Managers with administrative responsibility may not be able to benefit from the profits that they contribute to. Workers can use collective action to exert pressure and gain a portion of the earnings. Authority and control may not always imply that the same people are reaping all the benefits. 
Wright changed the definition of class to align it more closely with Marx's concept of appropriation. Classes are determined first and foremost by relations of surplus product appropriation and secondarily by relations of control over the technical division of labor and relations of authority. Managers and owners are separated. However, as long as the principle of legitimacy applies to those in power, conflict is often latent and not visible. In modern communities, certain people may be considered as naturally qualified for a position of authority due to their education and competence, while others will obey without question. A suitable foundation for authority legitimization will lead to a stable condition of society and conflict may arise when such justifiable causes are challenged or questioned. Thank you for watching the presentation. Do like, subscribe, share and leave your comments about this presentation or any other topics you would like to learn more about.